Welcome to Living Hope Podcast with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join me for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is bringing healing home. Last week, we entered the synagogue in Capernaum with Jesus and listened as he taught the word of God with authority. We were so focused on the words of Jesus that we did not notice the demonized man who entered the room. We were all startled as he suddenly cried out, Ah, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Luke chapter 4, verse 33 and 34. With authority, Jesus commanded the demon to be quiet and to leave the man. We were awestruck by the authority that Jesus manifested over demons. The man collapsed to the ground as the demon left him without harming him. All the people were amazed, saying, With authority and power, he commands unclean spirits, and they come out. Luke chapter 4, verse 36. After the service ended, we followed Jesus from the synagogue to the home of Peter's mother-in-law, where he lived. It was a short walk from the synagogue to the fishing district, where all of the fishermen lived together. We quickly discovered that Peter's mother-in-law was not able to receive us because she was ill and in bed. Dr. Luke noted in chapter 4 and verse 38 that Simon Peter's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever. Today we'll learn how to bring healing home with Jesus as our teacher. The story is recorded for us in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 8, Mark chapter 1, and Luke chapter 4. Some scholars believe that Peter's mother-in-law had malaria. In the time of Jesus, malaria was a problem in the swampy lake region not far to the north of Capernaum. We know that malaria is the number one killer of people in the world today especially in Asia, Africa, and South America. While we pray for a vaccine to be discovered, we also want to empower you to pray for people to be healed from malaria. I prayed for a man in Kenya with malaria, and his fever broke instantly. Let's observe from this story how Jesus ministered healing to the lady. First, we'll note her condition. Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever and they appealed to Jesus. Note that she had a high or a severe fever, a dangerously high fever, and that her family appealed to Jesus. In her condition, she was too sick to ask for help for herself. Sick people need friends who know how to appeal to Jesus on their behalf. We need to learn how to appeal to Jesus on behalf of others. If we don't, who will? It was not the lady's face but the faith of her friends and the faith of Jesus that saved her life. In this story, we find seven steps that Jesus took to minister healing. First, he saw her. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 1 says, Jesus saw Peter's mother-in-law. He saw more than her physical need. He saw her emotional and spiritual needs. The word Matthew chose when he said Jesus saw her is Adon. It means to know, to understand. It even means to honor. It's always an honor to minister healing to people. Always treat people with respect and honor. Care for people the way you would care for your mother. Matthew chapter 8 verse 14 says, Jesus saw Peter's mother-in-law laying with a fever. He saw her and he knew her condition. You can know by being told about someone's condition, but you can also know without being told. You can know by feeling sympathetic pains or by hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit tell you about a certain condition. What did Jesus do? He stood over her, Luke chapter 4 and verse 39. The NIV says he bent over her, so he connected with her. The original language helps us to understand that he stood at her head as that was the location of her illness. If it was her feet that needed healing, Jesus would have stood at her feet. There's a connection between proximity and anointing. Standing close to the man of God, you will receive what the man carries. 
If you choose to sit in the back bench at a meeting, you will go home with the same condition that you came to the meeting in. Proximity brings anointing, and proximity releases healing. So Jesus saw, Jesus knew, Jesus connected, then Jesus commanded. Luke says he rebuked the fever. The New English translation says he commanded the fever. Speak directly to the disease. Don't speak to the person saying, if you have faith, don't command Jesus. Jesus doesn't take commands from us. We speak directly and firmly to the disease. Speak with authority to the disease and tell it with power to go. What happened? The fever left Luke chapter 4 and verse 39. I've prayed for many fevers and headaches to go, and they have left immediately. What happened next? He saw, he knew, he connected, he commanded, and then he touched her. Mark and Matthew tell us he took her by the hand and lifted her up. His touch was more than loving compassion. It was actually a test. He gave her the opportunity to discover for herself that she had been healed and that strength had returned to her body. Luke says, immediately she arose, chapter 4, verse 39. Whenever you minister healing, always ask people to test themselves to measure how much their health is improved. You can ask a question like, did you feel anything when I prayed for you? The more your anointing increases, the more people will feel something happening in their body when you command healing. Then we invite you to ask, try to do something you've not been able to do since you have been sick. I prayed for a refugee in Turkey who told me he had a tumor on his back. I commanded the tumor to go. I asked him if he felt anything. He said no. I asked him to check his tumor. When he put his hand behind his back, his eyes cut as big as saucers. His tumor was gone. The astonishment continued. Immediately she arose and began to serve them. Jesus saw, Jesus knew, Jesus connected, Jesus commanded, Jesus tested, and then Jesus received. Jesus demonstrated that she was healed by allowing her to serve him along with the rest of the people in the home. We might be tempted to encourage the lady to rest, but allowing her to serve, Jesus demonstrated she was not just healed, she was restored. I prayed for a lady in Africa who had lost so much strength she could not even carry her baby. We prayed and she was healed. When I asked her to test her muscle, she ran to the back of the room and picked up a hundred-pound bag of cement. We all knew she had been healed. We were all astonished. The healing of Peter's mother-in-law was a gateway healing. Healing is never an end in itself. One healing will lead to another. Manifesting power over certain illnesses increases your confidence to believe God will use you to heal others with the same illness. More than that, you will grow in confidence to pray for other diseases. People will be drawn to you and recommend their friends to contact you for healing. That is what I mean when I say this was a gateway healing. Let's continue with the story. Verse 40, now the sun was setting and people brought to Jesus all who had various diseases. Jesus laid his hands on every one of them and they were all healed. One healing led to a citywide healing. Not only that, demons came out and many came out crying, you are the son of God, but he rebuked them all because they knew he was the Christ. One deliverance led to many being delivered. You can do what Jesus did. You can create a citywide revival. You can see, you can know, you can connect, you can command, you can test healing, you can prove healing by receiving and you can create a gateway for healing. Oh, what a great message this is. We've run out of time on this program, but we'll continue learning about how to bring healing home next week. Jesus, I thank you for the privilege of releasing this message today. I pray the Holy Spirit will give you courage, command disease to go, that you will learn from what Jesus just taught us, and you will do what Jesus did. So right now, if you got a headache, I command that headache to go. In Jesus' name, if you are struggling with fever, if you have a high fever, it's a symptom that your body is fighting something off. 
I command whatever your body is fighting to fight it well and to defeat it and for the fever to go and for the disease associated with that fever to go at the same time. You're carrying COVID symptoms. I come against those symptoms in the name of Jesus. I release healing into your body from COVID and from the consequences and from the side effects of COVID. I call them out of your body in the name of Jesus. You're carrying a migraine headache. I command your migraine headache to break. Put your hand on your head and just say with me, migraine headache, go. Migraine headache, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Release people from migraine headaches that they're carrying right now. Pray about all head pain. If you have some brain pain, some uh, something going on in your head, I prayed for a lady this week who had pain on the left lobe, and I commanded that pain to go. That left lobe pain left her immediately. We speak against brain tumors. If you've been diagnosed with a brain tumor, I command your brain tumor to shrink in the name of Jesus. By the power of Jesus, you can feel something happening within your head. You feel a tingling going on inside of your head. That's a token of the presence of God working on your life, releasing healing into your life. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of praying for people today. You're listening to this message and you'll say, I want to do what that man of God does. I want to say to you, you can do it. It's not because I have a gift. It's because I'm walking in obedience to what Jesus commanded us to do. If you will simply follow the life that Jesus has modeled for us to do, you will be able to do the same things that Jesus did. You're listening to this program and you've never received Jesus as your Savior. You've been amongst a group of people who are just uh, laughing at Jesus and mocking because there's a spirit inside you that's mocking Christianity. I command that spirit in you to come out to be set free. You're torn by habits and behaviors that you don't have any victory over and you want to follow Jesus, but you feel like you'll always be in defeat. I break off those spirits of affliction. I break off those spirits of addiction. I call you to be touched by Jesus. Jesus, touch someone right now. Break alcohol, break drug addiction, break pornography addiction, break the addictions of habits of life that pull people down and set people free today. Thank you, Lord, for this great word. Thank you for the opportunity to pray for people, not only to talk about what Jesus did, but to bring it into our own time and into our own circumstances. Jesus, touch people today. Call out to Jesus today. Ask him to save you from your sin, to forgive you, and to make you his child, to come into your life and to fill you with the Holy Spirit and to empower you to do all the things that Jesus did. If you receive Jesus as your Savior, or were healed while listening to this message, write to me and we'll send you more information to help you grow as a follower of Jesus. To hear all of this sermon or more uplifting messages, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join us next week for another episode of Living Hope Podcasts.